This, this, okay, there you go. So the mic's working. I was going to say after this uh, talk, I think I'm coming to the right issue today by Bitcoin. Um, I would like to make a quick poll uh, with, with the audience. I'm going to ask for other people here from Europe. Please raise your hand. Okay, about 15-20% of the people are from Europe. People from North America. Okay, maybe a bit more. People from South, South or Central America. Okay, and any people from Africa here? Okay, so I'm from Bulgaria. Um, it's a country pretty much almost the opposite side of the world, quite far away from here, from Eastern Europe. And my talk is uh, on what we are doing in uh, Bulgaria. So, <laughs> What's the goal of this presentation? I'm not going to talk about how Bitcoin is, uh, post just of owning Bitcoin, self-custody, uh, the fiat systems come, and so on. The goal of this presentation is to inspire people to do more. People like me. I, I, I look at myself as an absolute average job. I'm a software developer by craft. My whole life I've worked for someone else as an employee, and still, I have quite the big impact in Bulgaria about Bitcoin. So, I've done more than what I expected three years ago when I started, and I believe a lot of people can do a lot more than what they think they can achieve. I want to give some new ideas, and the title of my presentation is Think Globally, Orange Pill Locally. If it works in Bulgaria, it just might work everywhere. So, What's a Bulgaria? A lot of people might be too afraid to ask at this point. Um, so Bulgaria is, we have this red arrow there, point where is Bulgaria. It's in Eastern Europe, as I mentioned. Um, in a few numbers, this is relevant to, pre to the presentation. Just about 6 million population, uh, 110 square kilometers area. Whatever that means, it's hard to imagine it. So this is why I've given some uh, um, other countries and states in the United States as uh, uh, something to measure against. So, Guatemala, neighboring country, Cuba, South Korea, I uh, Iceland, are similar size, and Tennessee, Virginia, and Indi Indiana in the States. So, Sofia is the capital of Bulgaria, 1.5 million people. Again, this is relevant because for this conference, this is why I started with how many people are from uh, South America, North America, Europe, Africa, and so on. Because in order to make a conference, you must gather people together, you must gather the attendees, you must gather um, the speakers. So it really matters the concentration of the population, the, the how big the population is, and so on. And we have two other large cities, 300,000 people, large for our uh, uh, size, Plovdiv and Bar. The GDP of Bulgaria is seven, uh, 70 billion uh, dollars a year, which uh, I uh, compared to El Salvador, just to get the, the size. Uh, El Salvador, according to Google, is uh, in 2022 about three, uh, 32 and a half billion. The minimum wage in Bulgaria is $330 monthly salaries, in Europe about uh, monthly salaries, $4,000 uh, a year uh, after tax or about $2 an hour. So, that's Bulgaria in uh, a few numbers relevant to the, the, the Bitcoin adoption in Bulgaria and what we're doing there. And now a very short uh, history of Bulgaria and uh, money. So, we had hyperinflation in 1996-1997. I'm personally born in 89, so I was 7, 8 years old when the hyperinflation happened in Bulgaria. I was still a child, but I still remember. I remember very vividly because my father was talking how, oh my god, the dollar hit 3,000 level. And at the time, we were a kid, like, what does that even mean? The dollar is 3,000 level. Level is our uh, national currency in Bulgaria. But at the time, when I was, uh, you know, adult, he knew. Unless I bought dollars, I just lost all my savings. Unless I had some other, some form of property, something that cannot be debased, I just literally just lost my savings. So the financial interest in Bulgaria is, I don't know, you know, I'm not going to put a score on it, but I'm going to say that majority of Bulgarian people who want to save anything for themselves or for their children, they buy real estate. Nothing else, pretty much. There's a few gold bucks, there's a few people who buy stocks, but it's a very small percent of the uh, population of Bulgaria. 
and then I forget at one point the next Bitcoin. So I completely missed this. It went over my head, but apparently Ruzha Ignatova, which is a Bulgarian lady, made this shitcoin called OneCoin, and uh, she, of course, promoted it as the next Bitcoin. And a lot of Bulgarians lost money in this shitcoin, which made my job to a few people in Bulgaria a lot harder. But that's the reality of it. So, my personal journey. I'm a Bitcoiner since 2017. At the time, I was living uh, and working in London, and um, I was saving for a house. And I asked for a high yielding deposit in my bank in, uh, in London, and uh, the interest rate was just uh, horrible, whatever offering. And this is how I started looking into other saving technologies. In this case, I started with Bitcoin. So, <laughs> after the bull market of 2017 comes the bear market of 2018 19, dead inside, meaning almost no one that wants to talk about Bitcoin, all the debt again, and so on and so on, the standard stuff. And then in 2020, I started a YouTube channel. I have a slide about that, but the long story short is that I started a YouTube channel because there was no education in Bulgaria, video education about Bitcoin, any type of uh, education. 2021, the channel grew enough that we could do meetups. In 2022, it grew enough, the community around the channel, that uh, we made the first Bulgarian Bitcoin conference last year. And then, 2023, this year, beginning of December, we are opening a Bitcoin bar in Bulgaria which is that's the type of Bitcoin bar, with the idea a place for all Bitcoiners to be able to come and gather there. And 2024, next year, uh, I'm going to release a book. I'm going to cover this, and it's important why, uh, why I'm talking about the, bit, uh, the book and what people uh, watching this uh, presentation can um, get as an idea, something they can do. So, what starts with all? A crypto pyramid scheme. I got invited by a personal message on uh, Facebook that says, uh, there is this amazing thing that you can, uh, you know, like uh, yield 30% a month or something like that. And of course, my reaction was like, this is a crypto pyramid scheme. And the lady on the other side said, like, no, 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 it isn't. It's something amazing. It's a crypto project. Like, you have to work about this stuff, blockchain, and so on. And uh, I said, like, there's literally two possibilities. Either you're stupid enough that you don't get it, that you're inviting people to a pyramid scheme, or you're part of the game and you don't care that people are going to lose money. Then I started to check on the different platforms that Bulgarians use, is there any information about Bitcoin? And on YouTube, in Bulgarian language, there was about five videos total for the full. That's, uh, what is it, until 2020, from 2009, that's 11 years. For 11 years, only five videos in Bulgarian language were created about Bitcoin. And it's important uh, that I'm highlighting in Bulgarian language because Bulgaria is an ex-Soviet country, which means that I'm the first generation that studied English language in school. Majority of people my age or higher um, study Russian and they speak Russian, but they don't speak English language. So, what keeps me going? If not me, who? This is how it started. There was uh, almost no content, so some had created. So this is the call to action. People attending this conference or people who are at home watching this video, if no one else is doing it, maybe you should do it. So, Bitcoin is more important than a single person. We know that, all of us know that. And uh, all Bulgarians are going to hate me for this terrible translation, but we have this uh, person in Bulgaria, Levski, who is a revolutionary person. We were under oppression for many years, 500 years. And he said that if he loses, he just loses his life. That's all he can lose. But if he wins, the whole country wins. And this is the same thing with, with Bitcoin. If we win, Sometimes it's just us, everyone else, including, uh, including the, the people who hate on Bitcoin, even the bitter ships of the world, and the drunk of the world, or at least his kids are going to win. So, history, in my eyes, is going to be split before and after Bitcoin. So, enough about Bitcoin. Using the right platform. How to reach people in your country, in your language. Majority of uh, Bitcoiners are on Twitter, speaking English language, retweeting, sharing, the reality though is that in Bulgaria very few people use Twitter. That's just the reality. If I want to reach to Bulgaria, if I want to orange build them, if I want to present to them what is the problem that Bitcoin solves. For instance, the debate oh Bitcoin burns too much electricity, it burns too much electricity because you don't see the value created. Otherwise you'll be like, oh my air conditioning burns too much electricity, don't stop it. So in order to reach these people and talk to them and explain to them, you 
must be on the right platform. If you're not on the right platform, you'll never reach them. <laughs> different countries, they have different platforms. YouTube, most probably worldwide, except in China, don't have a platform for uh, video. However, though, uh, TikTok, a lot of the younger population, sadly, do not want to consume longer forms of content. They are just that dopamine hit. Junkies that would like 60 seconds video. Still, I do firmly believe that there is a way to reach out to the younger audience, to the ones that um, are just used to consuming content extremely quickly, with some uh, humor, with some um, video editing to be able to reach to them. And that's the first step, reaching to them. Eventually, with time, with obviously effort on their part, they will be able and they will take the time and effort to understand Bitcoin, to understand the problem that it solves in the world currently that we're living in. Box of stacks using the right language to communicate with people. So, scale. I said I started my mission in Bulgaria in 20, uh, 2020. So, without the community, you cannot have meters in person. Meters are important. People don't want to just watch videos online and uh, listen to, to people speak or one person speak and that's it. People want to meet in person with other people, make sure they're real beings. It's not uh, a special number to advance with Sophia, it's not AI generated content. They want to uh, speak with other people on their level of understanding of Bitcoin. So when too many people uh, are in a single community, then it's a time for a conference. We're currently in the conference in San Salvador as outdoor. And uh, this is my second time here. And there is again people from all around the world. In Bulgaria, the, the conference that we made last year was total with 10 speakers. I have a slide about the conference, so we're going to go there uh, uh, in, in a second. Uh, my point is that you can start small. You don't need to have a thousand attendees, uh, 50 plus speakers, and so on. You can start small. So, once the community is consistent enough and it survives a fair market and so on, maybe it's time to open a bit more bar. So, the conference. Attendees, without having a community, without having 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000 Bitcoiners in your country, you cannot, sadly, make a conference. Speakers, though, are easy. Because speakers are Bitcoiners. Bitcoiners want to assist, they want to help, they want to uh, reach out, and they, uh, they do care about adoption of Bitcoin all around the world, not just in the US, or let's say in Germany, in Spain, in England, and so on. Um, about the uh, uh, I have put there in uh, Marx, community versus advertising. The reality is that the attendees in our conference in Bulgaria, all of them were already part of the Bitcoin community. Advertisements do not work. People who are not Bitcoiners think a lot about the Bitcoin conference are not going to purchase a ticket and attend the, the conference. This is just the, the reality. You need a venue, obviously, in order to um, uh, hire the venue, you need to cover it, cover the expenses, so finance it. You need to sell tickets and you need sponsors. Bulgaria is a small market. The larger companies do not show what of interest about Bulgaria. That's just the reality went through the GDP, the size, the population, and so on. In the last uh, conference uh, last year, we had two sponsors, uh, Bonus and Nexo, which are companies based in Bulgaria with Bulgarian employees um, who, you know, have similar enough to, uh, to invest in this conference, to help the community uh, grow, and at the same time, uh, this hard to pull off project, uh, you know, to, to, to lay a hand. So, mistakes along the way. I personally made a lot of uh, mistakes calculating the expenses, uh, thinking about you know what the price of the ticket should be in order to finance everything. And of course, depending on are you in a bull market, are you in a bear market, there is either mark, either too many people who would like to attend the uh, conference. We have a very small uh, two minutes clip that I'd like to play now about what we made last year in 2020 to which is like
30,000 euros. It was budget friendly. Uh, in this 30,000 euros, we were able to pay for two coffee breaks, included in the price, and also lunch. The speakers who came to the conference were Jeff Wood, Greg Foss, Natalie Bruneo, I think I, I had the names maybe on another slide. My point though that is very important to come across is that Bitcoiners would assist you. Just if you think I cannot make, I cannot pull this off, the Bitcoin community is a team, we work as a team. People will always assist you because they know how important it is that Bitcoin is not something that is just in the US or let's say in San Salvador or in South America. It's a global phenomenon. Bitcoin bank. I'm going to skip this slide because I'm running out of time. But one story short, the idea is that I firmly believe that once a country or a city has enough Bitcoiners, they have to have a place that they know. I, I, I don't need a conference or I don't need a large meetup in order to meet up with other uh, Bitcoiners. I can go to a place where I know other Bitcoiners are going frequently and I'll be able to speak with other Bitcoiners. Merchants accepting Bitcoin in Bulgaria. Skipping the swine and going uh, directly to uh, the map. So this is the map of uh, around Bulgaria. Uh, the three yellow dots, where it says 26, 18, 22, are the three largest cities in Bulgaria that I mentioned uh, a bit earlier. Sofia, Plovdiv and Varna. So in these cities, um, these are the amount of merchants that accept currently Bitcoin. And as you can see, in the region, we are definitely dominant. Uh, Istanbul is there in Turkey, which is just Istanbul. The amount of people in that city is like more than in the whole of the country of Bulgaria. Um, myths and legends about Bitcoin. Over a year ago, I started writing a book called Myths and Legends about Bitcoin. Why book? There's these people who really think that if something's not on national television, or if it's not in a book, I don't care about it. This is how the idea came. Uh, for the, to write exactly a book. However, though, the content of the book, I'm going to go through the slides quickly and you can read uh, um, the different uh, chapters. Uh, they are literally just debunking the myths and legends about Bitcoin. Let's say uh, Bitcoin is too slow or Bitcoin 51% attack uh, uh, and the vulnerability, let's say, from a national state attacking Bitcoin. Uh, what if the internet stops? What if uh, there is no electricity uh, and so on? Um, uh, or let's say we need inflation. Without inflation, without the 2% inflation, there will be no growth, right? People are going to stop working if we have uh, deflationary currency. 21 million Bitcoin is just not enough for 9 billion people. Like, you know, one divided by the other doesn't work out. Um, Bitcoin is just used by, by criminals. And all these standard thoughts about Bitcoin from people who obviously haven't done the work. And important books. The Bitcoin standard, it's already written. No need to rewrite it. No need to uh, uh, try and write a book in a similar way uh, that, that explains Bitcoin and the problems that it solves. However, though, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of Bulgarians do not speak English. I've listened to uh, the audiobook of uh, the Bitcoin Standard and eventually I bought a hard uh, copy of the book, but a lot of Bulgarians cannot read it. So, uh, George Monov has translated the book, of course, with the permission of uh, the author, and uh, created the uh, Bulgarian version of, uh, of the book. The same thing with Jeff Woods, The Price of Tomorrow. We have now translated the book and uh, already, I don't know, hundreds of copies have been uh, uh, sold. Uh, it, it, it just got released like last month. And this is my final fight and I have 30 seconds. So, Satoshi started it all. But without us, without the people in this room, without the people watching this talk at home, Bitcoin wouldn't have continued on this journey. We're a community and work as a team. Believe in yourself and believe that others will help you. Last year, I came here to the Salvador conference alone. I met one other Bulgarian here while on the conference. Today, we have 10 Bulgarians here coming together to the conference. Jeff Wood, Greg Wood, Anthony Tony Pilch, Nusvan Hong, and Pierre Corbin came to Bulgaria. The question is, who will Bitcoin bring to your country? Thank you.